In FeatureCam 2014, we've introduced a number of improvements to the probing process. The first is if I go to the standard probing add-in button, you'll notice that we've got a number of new default values that we can set within the, uh, the different features. Uh, these will be loaded into the user-defined features uh, so that you only effectively need to fill in those values once. The other thing we've introduced is a number of new features for allowing for decision making. Um, so you'll see here I've got a number of features already pre-created, um, but what we're going to do is going to regenerate these uh, as we go through. So let's have a quick look at our machining sequence and see what we've got first of all. So you can see we've got uh, an initial uh, facing operation. So we clear the face and then we come in and start uh, pre-drilling and then doing a bit of side milling inside that hole and then we come in with the probe and then we probe the hole before moving on to the next one and again repeat the process so cutting that side and then probing again so what we want to do is we want to uh, put some decision making sequences to decide whether we continue or, or abort the machining process after the first side uh, the aim here is of course to just try and uh, establish the fact that we we don't want to do any unnecessary machining uh, if we've caused any problems or any issues on the first the first pass so if we play through the machining sequence just have a quick look at the NT code uh, you'll notice we have a facing operation then we have all of our side milling operations uh, with the pre-drilling and then we get to the end of the program so we need to insert a number of different uh, elements which allow us to control this process. Now before this was a manual process, you would have had to manually create the uh, the code to do so. Uh, we've now uh, modified this uh, and allowed you to breed in different feature types uh, that you can simply enter the values for. So let's have a quick look at these. I'm going to stop the simulation. First one I want to do is enter a label uh, to just start the process off. Uh, so I'm going to go in and say uh, user defined feature, choose next. And then you'll see we've got three new feature types. So we're going to use the bottom one here which is test jump label. Once I go to next you'll see that you've got a, uh, a comment, uh, a remachine flag register and a label. So the comment uh, could be anything, we could maybe just put uh, that we want a start or something along those lines, maybe start bore. Uh, and then I can press set and that will update the comment for the start of the process. The remachine flag register is basically a counter. Uh, and we will set this to zero uh, on this initial uh, label and then we can start adding to it if we wish to uh, have multiple machining sequences. Finally we have a label, this will be a, a, an end block number that we go to uh, that allows us to search through the NC code uh, and in this case I'm going to set this to be 11, say so set and I can say finish at this. Uh, we do have uh, uh, positioning and so on but it's irrelevant for this because it's just simply NC code. So I can say finish once I've created that, the only other thing I need to do is I want it to be the second thing to happen. I want the face operation to happen first, and then I want this uh, label to happen. So to do this, I just simply go in and change the base priority, and in this case, I'm going to set it to 2. So say OK, and then put that up as the second item. Play through my machining sequence again. And we go to our NC code, and you'll notice I have my face operation, and then I have this start bore, uh, 101 is equal to 0 and then the block number N11. So now we run through the machining sequence we then have the probing sequence so we've already got the probing sequence in there uh, so this is specific to this uh, Fadal uh, machine uh, and after we've done the probing we then want to take uh, the values that were stored by this, this probing operation uh, and then make a decision based on those. So to do that we go back into our new feature user defined feature and again I'm going to select one of the new items, only this time I'm going to choose the Test Abort Continue Remachine. Choose Next. So this has a lot more parameters to control, a lot more elements that uh, we want to work with. So the first thing is just the comment, again that's what's going to be output at the top of the process. We then have uh, the size, so we want it to be uh, uh, the same size as our uh, hole that we've uh, we've just machined. So I'm going to use the pick option and I'm going to say I want to go same as diameter and in this case I'm going to select the circle in the middle there and say OK. 
Next we have the tolerance value. Now at the moment this is set to 0.25, so I can drop this down to maybe 0 0.05. Then we have all of the register uh, values that we're looking for to enter our, our numbers into. Uh, so we have the remachine flag register, uh, we have the nominal value register, the tolerance, and the temporary register. So the temporary register will be used for uh, any kind of uh, um, logic or, or uh, processing of these values uh, and you can update these values, maybe I want to make this the, the 103 and maybe I want my tolerance to sit in 104 um, so we can move those around and it will adjust accordingly uh, we have the nominal value register which is going to uh, place this value in there uh, and then the remachine flag register is basically the counter value that we used in the jump label so uh, we're using the same value there and we're going to increment the counter to allow us to do the remachining uh, as we scroll down, the result register is simply where the probing sequence, uh, the probing macro that's already on the machine, uh, is going to enter the result uh, of the measured size of this bore. Uh, comparison operator is just simply the, uh, uh, the item that will do the, the logic uh, calculation with the values. And then we've also got our continue label and our remachining label uh, and our size error label. So these are the jump labels that we wish to go to uh, in order to uh, simply uh, navigate around the program. So I'm going to change my values here from the default. So I want 12 to be my continue label. My remachine label I'm going to enter as 11 because this is the value again I set in the jump label at the beginning because I wish to return to that position. Uh, and then finally the size error label I'm going to set to 13 so I'll keep it with my numbered sequence. Finally, we've got uh, an abort label. So this is a uh, a label that we can enter at the end of the program uh, to jump to if we wish to abort. We've then got a series of messages that simply get output with each of these. So again, once I'm happy with that, I can say finish and say OK. Move this up uh, to position here. And in this case, this is the fifth item. So let's go to our miscellaneous and set our base priority to be 5. If I now play the sequence again, check our results area, and again look at the NC code. So we have our initial starting jump label, note N11 at the beginning of the sequence, uh, and also note that hash 101 is equal to zero as well. Scroll down, go through our machining process, go through our measurement, and then we get to our label. So here you can see uh, the sequence of the process. So if I just make this a bit bigger. So we set our nominal value in 102 as we did in our uh, in our decision making item. Uh, we then do the uh, uh, the logic to decide the difference between our nominal and our measured, uh, and we get to that put into 103. We then set a tolerance value, and then we start making the decisions. So the decisions are simply uh, basically identifying if our value is less than tolerance, so i.e. we are within tolerance, go to 12. So that will scan all the way down to N12 and continue machining. Uh, if uh, decision two, if it, if it fails uh, or skips that, uh, and it's less than zero, i.e. we've over machined, go to 13. So that skips to N13, and then we get a D print size error, go to 999. Uh, and then if it skips one and two, we then increment the counter, so we go from zero to zero plus one, so that means it's equal to one. So if it's equal to one, go to 11, so it runs all the way back up to the top and runs through that sequence again. If we get through these two stages again and uh, we get to this stage and it says if uh, we've added another one to a value that's already 1, if we add 1 to it it becomes 2 so it's no longer equal to 1, uh, in which case it will skip that and go remachine failure and then go to 999. Now at the moment we have no 999, so what we need to do is we need to uh, add this into our sequence as well. So to do that we create another machining item, so I'm going to go to a user, over to my test jump label, choose next, and then the comment in this one I'll just say uh, abort, and say set, and then the label I'm going to make it 99999, so set that, and say finish, and in this case under the miscellaneous I'm going to set its base priority to be something a lot bigger, maybe 100, so you set, apply, and OK. And we put it all the way to the end of the sequence for our abort process. 
So now this is at the bottom there. We can rerun through our machining sequence. Go to our NC code and then if we scroll all the way to our bottom of our program we should see we've got an abort N9999 uh, and that is where the program will jump to if it fails the other operations. So once we're, we've created those, those features we can then turn on the rest of the uh, operations so for example the group 10 uh, and also we've got uh, some additional ones such as the continue label for the next operation. Plane through the sequence then got our part like so and we're ready to throw that on the machine uh, and uh, run through that sequence.